Hey guys, I'm Eman2000, and today we're going to be going through the solar generator build. Now, I've been actually planning this out for a couple years, trying to find different things that uh, I wanted to do and things, but uh, this will be part one. There'll be several parts, and in this part, I want to kind of explain what I want to do, uh, <clears throat> what all the parts here are. There's probably, yeah, there's more than what you can see on that uh, the frame right now, but I will start off with saying I have a little bit of a cold or something. Maybe it's just allergies. No idea. But my nose is plugged, and I probably sound like that. So, uh, hopefully it doesn't bother people too badly. Uh, I'll try to talk normally, but... Anyhow, let's, uh, just jump right in here and, uh, see if I can explain all this stuff. Start on this end, I suppose. Just because. But anyhow, uh, let's, let's just take this camera off of here. This might be a little easier. So, these are two uh, snap top battery boxes from uh, Milko there. Got a couple of those. I actually have my uh, multimeter stuck in this one, but got two of those. I've got a couple of Everstart Group 27 Marine Deep Cycles. These are, there you go, 750 Marine Cranking Amps and 109 Amp Hours. That's your part number there. A couple of those. Uh, these cables here, these are power bright, uh, two gauge, six feet, six foot of red and six foot of black. Uh, battery cables. Now you notice that this end is off. And I'll demonstrate later. I'll probably pull another the other end off. But end of the black one but yeah I just pulled straight off someone else had the one one aught cables just like these just thicker and he had the same problem so that doesn't matter at least with uh, this end is the wrong wrong size but this end I'm probably just gonna have to crimp it on there tighter and uh, put some solder in there also in the bottom of this as you have the correct size, uh, I think these are 5 sixteenths. Now what confused me at first is that this actually says 2 aught. And the listing on Amazon said uh, 2 gauge. And they are actually 2 gauge, so that was kind of confusing, but they are actually 2 gauge, but I got just 10 of those. They're cheaper if you buy them in bulk like this. Uh, but those fit the right size, and I needed I need. I only need six of those, but oh well, that's all right. Uh, this. This is the inverter I'm gonna use. This is a Pro Watt SW. For some reason, I keep thinking that this is a Pro sign, but it's Pro Watt SW. I can't get that through my head apparently, but it's only a 600 watt unit. I was originally gonna get a thousand watt, and then I thought about a 2,000 watt, and then I thought, well. I'll probably just end up upgrading to a 2,000 watt unit later, so I might as well just start out small. Plus, this is 180 bucks, so it's a bit cheaper. Um, so 600 watts will be, be good enough for what I wanted to do right now. Just during the springtime, I'm sure the power goes out every time we get a big thunderstorm, so that's one of the reasons why I want to actually build this. Um, this big old connector here supposedly can handle 350 amps and we'll take two gauge wire so that's like an Anderson style connector and I have this little dual outlet deal here not much to that and this fan just a little 12 volt uh, let's see here. and I haven't even looked at this stuff yet Blah, 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 blah. At least a fan plays into a cigarette Okay, lighter. so you've probably noticed that I haven't pointed out any kind of uh, solar panel. <laughs> and this is supposed to be a solar generator. Now, funny thing. I actually got two of these things. Uh, one is for this, and one is going on a shed that we're putting lights in. So, anyhow, uh, this is actually the data sheet for... Yeah, these Renogy panels. 
But anyhow, both of them were defective. Not one, but both of them were defective. One of them had no output voltage, and the other one was only putting out 10.5 volts. And that was in full sunlight, so that wasn't quite right. So that's all that characteristics, whatever. I did just order more of them, the same ones or whatever, but oh well, that'll be just fine. Hopefully the next set will actually work. Now, it's kind of unfortunate that I'm sick, but it seems like every time I get a package in that I actually want to film, I get sick. It's kind of funny, I guess, but... Oh well, but... This was actually supposed to come on August 9th, is when the rest of this stuff was supposed to be here. And that's this stuff right here so in other words it was nine days late uh, i'm actually filming this one on the 19th but i actually got it yesterday and i was too busy mowing the lawn in order to actually do this but anyhow so next i'll probably move on to the uh well actually i should probably tell you why i'm building this now like i mentioned earlier my power goes out just about every time that we get any kind of uh, a thunderstorm. So any kind of big thunderstorm. And it usually gets knocked out for about six hours. So, really six hours I probably don't need to throw out a refrigerator. But it could be, it could be useful if it goes on longer than that. Um... So I don't really actually need a solar panel. I could just go with a normal charger, but I figured I'd go with the solar panel just in case. And you know, occasionally it might go out for a couple days. The longest one that we've had is five days, and that was during the winter. And our house is all electric, so this one really helps. Here we go again. Now I wanted to point out um, I cut all the heat shrink off because I'm going to solder these guys on, but. Also, there's wires, little strands sticking out all over the place on this one. I'm going to have to go through and cut all that off because I actually need the uh, quarter inch connection to fit on the inverter. But anyhow, this is the one that I'm going to pull off that I don't need. That yeah, should be quite a bit tighter than the uh, positive. But it's still coming off for sure. That one's definitely tighter. Here, let's do this. Bright idea. Now, this one's actually reasonably tight. Though. It's, it's tight. <laughs> Actually, quite tight. I think I'm actually pulling the insulation back. It's not good. Oh, well, I'll just have to cut that off. That's fine, I can't use the connector like I said anyway, but I end up soldering these on, so I'm going to do that next, I'm going to solder these. Okay, things. so moving on to the soldering these cables, so I'm going to need some flux to start with. I just have the normal rosin core electrical flux, which I just stuck my thumb in. Whoops. Oh well. But uh, with this time, with this uh, kind of connection here, I've already gone through, like I said, these are kind of loose, so I stuck it in the vise and crimped it down tighter. I'm just going to apply some flux onto the uh, end there because that's the best I can do. I'm sure it's better than nothing. Let's put the brush here. You can see that. And 
And of course, we need some solder. Um, I've taken this, like, not very thick Walmart solder and just uh, twisted it up like this so it's twice the thickness. Then, you take a torch, a little propane torch here, and your ignition source, and ignite. Adjust flame, and we'll just come in here and I kind of want this hot because it does take a while to heat up. And we'll just tip this like this. Let's see here. Doesn't really matter where I get this out. Coming in from weird angles for the camera here. And eventually that flux is going to start to smoke. And when that happens, right there. Should be about ready to start melting solder. Get a little longer here. itself to it. <laughs> it's hot enough on the connector, but the solder doesn't want to melt on there, probably because I didn't get enough flux on there. Now. Let me come around to the other side of the camera because I'm having a hard time getting this to work. <laughs> Closer to it. Insulation smells like burning diesel. And yes, you shouldn't put your flame into the copper. It's a bad idea. Because that will oxidize the copper and cause it to not want to... Uh, Take the solder in, so it's like it's doing now. Starting to melt. Come on. It wants to do it. There we go. Yeah, solder that I put up on the top got pulled into the wire too. And that's what you want. Solder that I was putting in here. And once you get solder onto the wire, the wire can conduct the uh, heat better into the into itself and actually get hotter faster. That's peculiar. I guess they do warn you not to put these tanks upside down. Yeah, that's probably why I did that. This probably is actually getting close, but it's still taking in more solder, so we're gonna keep on heating that up.
That wind's blowing the heat right back in my face. The torch. We're pretty close to as good as we're going to get it. Really. I'm not getting my hand too much into the shot. Can't wait to review this footage, and it's just a hand in the picture. Yeah, it's probably about as good as we're going to get it. Yeah, I'll call that good. It'll hold it on there better, I'm sure. Better than what it was. My first one turned out better, but let's, let's take a look at this. Here. As you can see the big ugly solder blob. And it, I don't see where it actually... Well, maybe it did. Maybe it penetrated into the wire a little bit, but... Yeah, for the most part, it doesn't really look like it got down in there very far. But, probably let that cool down. It'll be good enough to hold it on, really. That crimp is probably solid enough to conduct the electricity. I just want to make sure it's not pulled off or something like that. So, that'll probably work.